Hey everybody, Jerry with Second Life Design. Um, got another shop tour video today. A little bit different than normal, but I think there's gonna be a lot of good tips in here and be really interesting stuff to see. So just kind of follow along and yeah, we'll get some good stuff going and hopefully keep these videos going and um, hopefully people get some good ideas out of them. So just keep following along, we'll go from there. All right, who are you and what do you do? Uh, I'm Andrew Kaufman. I run Turtle Up Trailers. We manufacture teardrop camping trailers and expedition trailers and uh, do trailer maintenance and repair as well. All right, very cool. I've noticed um, after following you on Instagram that you make a lot of the frames out of steel or aluminum. Um, that's I followed teardrop campers for a long time. I've always been a desire to build one. Uh, I've just never seen one steel frame like you're doing. So, what kind of brought you to that? to that method of construction. Have you seen it before? Is it something your own invention? What, what brought uh, you to that point? No, the, the, I don't know of any other person. When I started, I didn't know of any other teardrop manufacturer building them this way. Um, I don't like the idea of a, a wood box being placed and bolted down to a steel frame when it's gonna be going over the road and getting bounced around. Um, fasteners can come loose, that sort of thing. So our frames are all single piece welded um, construction with 16 inch center studs, just like you would um, on a regular enclosed cargo trailer. Um, but ours are a little bit heavier built than that as well. We do all tube frames. Um, we don't do, you know, thin sheet metal studs. It's all one by two inch square tubing. So our walls are um, two inches thick and we can insulate them that way. It's easier to run wiring and make changes. We actually run all our wiring in conduit. Okay. Um, so going, going with a metal frame allows us to do all this and keep the, the trailers more rigid and just more rugged. Okay, I think, I think at this point, let's just show one of these things and we'll kind of go from there and kind of let it, let's see what we can find out. Okay, okay. Right. so which model, which, which model are we looking at right now? So this is our squirt model, this is a four by eight. Um, so this is our smallest one we do. Uh, it's more, more or less meant for, I mean, a couple could sleep in this just fine. There's a lot of couples that do a four by eight teardrop, but uh, my vision of it was, you know, me and the dog going out hunting for a weekend or something like that. So um, this is uh, off-road, so it's got the 31 inch tires and a four inch lift torsion axle, so it's independent suspension. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, I'd say we're about 25% of the way into this build. Okay. Um, just a rolling chassis with some interior walls. So at this point, it is just the interior. So the exterior is what we're showing. And that's what we're talking about with these curved uh, steel panels, or the walls, I guess you would say. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is all, it's a complete chassis with the trailer and everything. It's yep. not just, as you said, like the wooden box on a trailer. So it's all together and yeah. all rigid. So and... most teardrops, uh, they make the frame and then they bolt this whole sidewall, which would be, you know, three quarters of an inch to inch and a half of wood right. down to the steel frame. We fully weld ours at the bottom all together, single piece. Okay. Um, I just think it's, it's more, more rigid. It's going to last a lot longer. Well, that's, I'd see, you know, if you follow them a lot, it seems as if people are just kind of making sandwiches where they're taking three quarter plywood and one inch rigid insulation and putting some on the inside and they're just, yeah. it just seems like a lot of space for like water intrusion or bugs or whatever. Yeah. So I guess with this, you're, you're getting so much insulation area anyway. The, and, um, what size steel are you using for this? Okay, so um, the ribs, we're actually cutting these flat, and I'll, I'll kind of, we'll, we'll maybe get a close up yeah, inside there, but uh, these are 3 16 inch thick steel. This is a steel frame one. And the, there's tabs in here, so, so we cut a rail, okay, and it's divided into three pieces. I can zoom in here. Yeah, so we've got this rail here, and then there's an identical one two inches away from it inside. And we use a, a tab in here that makes a standoff. So this is okay. empty and hollow in here. And so we weld those up with plug welds and then we cap the thing with 16, uh, 16, or I'm sorry, 16th inch um, sheet metal on the top. And we roll that around that edge. Okay. These also, then you have three sections of these that kind of weld together all the way down the arc. And they also locate your studs to be welded too. So it makes it real easy, seamless. Everything's located and uh, goes together real smooth. So it should also be mentioned that you do um, produce these wall sections for people to buy, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, so we just started offering wall kits in steel and aluminum. Um, they ship flat, so they'll be all separated, uh, except for the arcs. We, we go ahead and we weld the arc sections for you. Okay. All you have to do is put them together, weld them up, uh, and, and weld the studs in. If you want to see a video of me doing that, you can go on um, turtleuptrailers.com okay. and uh, go to the store link and 
Uh, I think just click on wall kits and okay. it'll pop right up there with one of the images. Okay. Now this is this is really um, it's really slick looking. To see this compared to any other teardrop that's been out there, this seems like a kind of innovative thing that I think could take on you know, a whole thing. This is pretty interesting to see uh, the style of them. I just it makes a lot more sense. It's kind of one of those. Why hasn't this been done long ago? I, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's pretty incredible to see. So that's, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, just from seeing your other trailers and other stuff, it seems like you use really a lot of high-end components. Would that be right? Yeah, yeah. We try to make sure that all of our components match the quality of the trailer. So we don't want to put, you know, something that's going to fail in a year or two. Plus, I warranty these for two years, two years full okay. warranty. So, uh, but we have components on them like our mattresses that have a five-year warranty on them. Okay. We've got our Dometic air conditioner, like I'm sticking on this one over here. Uh, it's got a two-year warranty by itself. And uh, something I like to tell my customers too, because I've been kind of jerked around on the on the warranty claims, is that um, when you have an issue, let's say your mattress gets a huge stain in it or whatever, and we can we can get into that, but you just tell me about it I send you a new mattress I get your old one back and I take care of the warranty claim for you okay. I don't want you guys dealing with the, the suppliers of mine because I got a little more skin in the game than, than, than everybody else does so it's a much simpler that way uh, that way you're not fighting with the manufacturers of the of the products but absolutely um, yeah uh, even the tires you know we go a little bit more expensive on the tires and the rims just to make sure we have a, a really high quality product mm -hmm. okay I think at this point I think we'll uh we're gonna go check out the one you're building right now. I think that'd be kind of a, we've seen the empty the empty shell. We'll see one that is a little more completed and, yeah. we'll, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so what are we looking at here? Okay, so this is our 2019 model Beacon trailer. This is a customer build though. Um, they opted to do a little bit narrow. Normal Beacon size, this is our biggest one. It's a six by 10, with, uh, 10 feet long, six feet wide. They wanted to sh narrow it a little bit so it's five and a half feet wide. 10 feet long because they're pulling it with a Jeep Wrangler. They wanted kind of the, the wheelbase to almost match up with their Jeep. Okay. Um, but uh, they went with a kind of a champagne color. It's got a plastic over it right now, but it's a champagne color. So the, the light brown color yeah. is, that is the actual, It's a, I saw the plastic on yeah. there, but that is the actual it's, color. Uh, yeah, so okay. what the door is basically, it doesn't have any plastic on it. Okay. And then uh, they modified the heck out of this thing. They wanted a rooftop air conditioner. Uh, which I just installed today. They did the off-road model with the 31 inch uh, by 10.5 inch tires. They did side windows along with the windows on the, on the doors. Um, and they also did a moon gazer window on the very front. Okay. Uh, they modified the cabinets in the back and they went with the original shelf on the inside. Okay. Um, plus they put a big old toolbox on the front of it. Yeah, and we'll get all, all different angles on this thing, but um, how long does something like this take to make? I mean, from start to finish, like as you are the complete manufacturer, like yeah. you were starting from a pile of tubing, making the trailer, you, you make the trailer yeah, too, Yeah, we right? build everything here except for the axles and, you know, small components, but that does. Okay, but like yeah. you're making the frames, you're making the shell, you're doing it all here. So, I mean, from my start to finish, how long is something like this? Yeah. You're a one-man shop, correct? One man, yeah, it's just me right now. For me, uh, this one is gonna take me three months, so that's kind of where I, I put my lead times at. Um, if I get multiple orders, obviously it gets pushed out a little bit, but yep. I do try, if I get a multiple order, I build them kind of side by side okay. to some point, just because it's, I only got so much space. Right. Uh, 30 by 60 shop, so um, I can't, house a bunch of material and just leave it there and hope it stays clean. I mean, I gotta, I gotta get it used up when I get it. So, Correct. Um, but yeah, it takes about three months to get them done. Okay. And how far along are you on this one? This is about a 75% mark, I think. So, um, what we got left on this is, uh, finish up the wiring. Um, the toolbox needs bolted down. The hatch needs to be built, which will be next week. Uh, and I'd always and it's just finishing. maybe you can share your experience with I've always heard that building the hatch is kind of the big pain It's the worst part It is the worst part um, You'll notice a lot of teardrops are kind of they have like curved sections, right? Um, and then they uh, They have a lot of flat spots. Well, we don't do any of that which is probably hurting us a little bit just because I designed this arc from scratch and it's a complete continuous arc on the sidewalls um, Same thing with the hatch this arc is ever-changing radius it's not one set radius okay um, so our hatches are a little bit more difficult to manufacture but it doesn't matter what teardrop you're on if you're gonna do a curved wall section or a curved hatch 
It is the hardest thing to do. Okay. Yeah. And here you can kind of see, it might be a little easier to see the different sections of the frame rail you were talking about. Like yeah. where they're, they're, so like all the, what would be the studs basically yeah. are all attached in there. And so it's you've all... got a, in, in, an exterior uh, 3 16 inch piece that's cut on the laser or, C, or plasma. And then uh, your interior one, and then there's tabs kind of at all these spots. And then a piece of uh, sheet metal that actually wraps all that. Okay. So that's, it kind of. A sandwich of a different variety, but it seems a lot, heck of a lot stronger, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. So let's, uh, talk, let's see if we can talk about the galley a little bit here. Okay. Um, so standard cooler in there, like your, your expedition cooler or whatever. Yeah. Um, what, what's the, because I know you use like some plastics and that, some HDP for the shelving and that. Is that, um, is that, would that be correct? Yeah, we're the only ones that use uh, HDPE, uh, high density polyethylene. Um, it's kind of what like high end uh, outdoor cabinets are made of. Okay. Um, it's waterproof. It doesn't swell or shrink with heat and humidity. Um, it, it's just a really, I, I don't know why more people aren't using this in the teardrops. They're outside, they're gonna get wet. Right. It's, it's just a great product to use. In I mean, side. does it come in sheets the same way everything else does? Yeah, they come in uh, four by eights or five by tens. Um, I normally try to get four by eights right now just because I, it, it's hard to work with five by tens. This stuff is heavy. This is, yeah. um, it's expensive. It's heavy, but it's a really good. How much really is a four by eight sheet roughly? Uh, my cost is about three hundred bucks. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, it, I think if somebody's and just from my own experience, if you're working with like a high end plywood or something like that, you're going to be paying a lot anyway. So it's kind of if you're paying a hundred dollars a sheet or eighty dollars a sheet for like a nice plywood that has a limited, you know, like kind of a, a limited timeline, we'll call it, because yeah. if it gets wet, it's done. So I guess and, to and me, you don't have I mean, to finish it either. You yeah, know, you so get a little bit of savings there. Well, and I think um, so that I think. A lot, and I like about yours is kind of the being the, the tinted HTP. You can get different colors, you get different yeah. things. And it kind of brings a kind of a cleaner look, a more modern look, I guess I would say. Yeah. Um, that's what I prefer. That I think a lot of people they go with, you know, they're building teardrops. They're like, well, everything's got to be golden oak, you know, yeah. and because it's yeah. that's what we can get from the box store. Like, no, we can. We're it's 2019. We can Which update is, a little bit. I love the look of the wood cabinets. I do, um, but again, for just a functionality point, um, I like to build my trailers to where I. I if I'm going to warranty them for two years, I don't want to be refinishing cabinets, right. you know, once a year for these guys. And I don't want them to have to do it after the warranty's up. Yeah. Um, so this is just a, a way that um, we can supply something to our customers that is going to last a lifetime. And it works just like wood. I mean, we cut it with, you know, the same routers and, and table saw and it, it, it cuts beautifully. Okay. So that was my next question. I was going to say, how does it, um, I mean, it cuts the same way or using, it looks like pocket holes to yep. pull it. So yep. I mean, like you're... Standard Craig jig will. Yeah. I mean, so you can't glue it. There is, you, it will not hold glue of any sort. Uh, okay. You can weld it, but I can't afford a welder. So, right. Um, or at least not a plastic one anyway. So yeah, we use pocket holes, and I dado everything. So okay. Um, you know, even even up here on this lid that hasn't been attached yet. Yeah, let's get a, get a close up of this. This is all dadoed, and all my all my uh, dividers are dadoed, same, all the way down on this on this back panel. So it's gonna be for overall strength, and that, and then also, I mean. I would think all these things adding in has to be adding up to the overall rigidity of the yeah, whole unit. Yeah, so then this back panel here is actually tied into the sidewall frames too. So you're not going to get any twisting or anything on our, okay. our cabinets. As they, you know, as, as normal cabinets would get jarred down the road, being mm -hmm. beat around and bumped, um, especially with an off-road trailer, uh, they would tweak and you'd get some cabinet doors that wouldn't really line yeah. up after a while oh, and they would rub. So this, this eliminates that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. And then, so it's all aluminum. This one is an aluminum frame, is that right? Yep, all aluminum frame. It's got aluminum skin on the outside that's uh, got a polyvinyl paint on it. This is 32 thousandths uh, thick aluminum here. And then our roof is 46 thousandths thick um, mm -hmm. to kind of help with you know any impacts. We, I've had tree branches fall on a windy day, you know, if you're yep. parked underneath trees, and, and it'll dent it a little bit. But what's nice about our Raptor line coating up here is it kind of flexes with it, and it's uh, really, really durable. Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna do a quick walk around of this so you can see some different angles and then maybe we'll take a peek inside. Yep, sounds good. All right, we're gonna do a walk around of this thing, kind of get some different angles on it and we'll take an interior look. Yeah, that's a monster toolbox on the front of this thing. Yeah, it is. That's like from a pickup truck or something. <laughs> if you take a peek inside, you can see the batteries. They've got two six volt batteries with 225 amp hours a piece that they hooked up in, I hooked up in uh, parallel, so. Holy cow, so yeah. they got, they're gonna have lots of juice in lots here. Lots of juice, yeah. Wow. Normally we do a 150 amp uh, hour deep cycle battery for these. So, okay. But they wanted to up upgrade that a little bit. They wanna be off 
the grid for a little while longer than normal. So. Okay. And it looks like the tongue is fairly long on this too. Is that is this standard or they, they spec it that they, way? They added for the extended tongue option. It adds 18 inches to the tongue. It makes it a little wider. Okay. They also put the off-road coupler on there. That's 15,000 pound rated. Uh, that's... So you can put a panel, which I like for off-road. I've mm -hmm. seen some of the real expensive off-road couplers. That, but what I don't like about them is they've got one bolt that bolts it to your truck. Uh, right. And I haven't seen a real good one out there that I would be uh, comfortable with going off-roading with. Okay. Uh, just because that one bolt, even though it's grade eight or, or whatever, it, the, the sheer of, on it. Is, at the end of the day, there's still only one thing holding exactly, the whole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd much rather have a panel where it's. Uh, that's what the military has been using for a long time. They're going to keep on using it. Absolutely. So. So what is the, you know what, roughly what this thing's going to weigh when it's all done? Yeah, this one, with everything they've got on it, it's going to be right around 1,800 pounds. Oh, wow. So that's um, fairly, yeah. I mean, so it looks big, but I mean, something in the, I guess, with a lighter towing capacity could tow this then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're going to pull it with a Jeep Wrangler. Um, okay. I had one that was 1,540 pounds. They pulled it with a RAV4, four-cylinder, four 2015. Okay. Um, so and they pull it just fine. So, I mean, this one's quite a bit bigger than the other one. What's, I mean ballpark what's the smaller one going to be when it's all wrapped yeah, up yeah i've got it modeled out on solidworks and it weighs right about 800 pounds oh wow yeah, so, so i mean really, that's really like you can pull it with a mini cooper if you wanted so. okay no that's that's good to know yeah. that's um that's a it's it's crazy you know using the different materials and it seems like it'd be overkill you know for the hdpe even as heavy as it is but um you're not you're taking away like the the layers of plywood and all the different stuff yeah. that it, you know that all adds up you know yeah, it's a lot of it, weight and a lot of it's about tongue weight too if you can right. get your tongue weight right so you want 60 percent of your trailer in front of your axle okay um so when you're doing so on a 10 foot long trailer you just take 10 feet times 60 percent and that shows you exactly where your center of axle needs to be okay um so when if you are building a trailer just make sure you do that and you'll you'll, you'll set your tongue weight right where you want to be okay yeah. that's good to know all right, let's get a repositioned here and we'll take a look right. inside. We're gonna get as much video as we can to this. Hopefully it's not too echoey, but um, as he said, about 75% completed. The interior still a ways to go, but I guess we'll kind of go from this back shelf and go from there. Um, anything you wanna add here? Yeah, sure. Um, so our interior walls are also a composite. The only place we use wood in these right now because I haven't found a good alternative is in the, in the actual flooring itself. But we, we, we cover the floor with um, uh, a vinyl uh, flooring like you would see in like a laundry room or something like that. Uh, it's got a foam backing. You get a little R value out of that plus some sound deadening. But this is expanded PVC. So we use this a lot in like sign, um, yeah, like absolutely. outdoor signs, that yep. sort of thing. Uh, it, same thing, it, wood works, it, it, it works just like wood. Uh, you can route it, it uh, comes in multiple different colors and we get a little thermal uh, break from it as well. So. so so how, I mean, how do I say it? Like how thick are the walls? Like from the, like what's, what's, the, what's the cavity inside for insulation, I guess? Uh, two inches, yeah. Okay. So we get R10 value on the insulation itself, two okay. inch thick rigid foam. I'm wanting to uh, spray foam these whole things in the, in the future, but we're not there yet, but yeah. it's coming. Um, and then you've got 32 thousandths uh, uh, aluminum on the outside and you've got quarter inch uh, PVC, okay. expanded PVC on the inside. So all together, you know, you're looking at two and a quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, I mean, like, it's like there. basically a two inch thick wall. Yeah, yeah. And then would that be the same for the, the roof and the floor? Yeah, everything is, yeah, all two inches. We want to get as much, um, we, we even have insulation in the floor just to you yeah. know, keep that cold air from, you know, coming up yeah. through the the mattress at night so so you said this one is just a standard shelf what are the different options you had typically or you've done yeah. before yeah uh, so this would be what would be on your base model actually the base model the shelf would be out a little farther because you wouldn't have these okay uh, these windows these are an add-on but we shorten this shelf up they've got two big dogs they want to take camping with them so okay. uh, they needed a little extra space um, again all HDPE HDPE it transfers in from the from the galley um, this one is going to have 110 and your 12 volt hookups in here so you can charge your phone, yeah. uh, you know, run your laptop to watch movies or whatever you want to do. Uh, they all got the in floor storage, which is a stainless uh, pan down here. It's all TIG welded, watertight. We do that here as well. Um, they did opt for the uh, air conditioner I told you about. It's a Brist 2. Um, we were just talking off camera there. It's going to freeze them out of here. It's going to be cold. Plus, yeah, they so, get a heater in that as so well. This Little this little camper has a thirteen thousand BTU uh, AC and it's also a heater as well. So I mean, 
I guess if you're in the extreme south, you know, the southwest, we have a lot of heat, it'd be one thing, yeah. or also it gets cold at night, you know, so, you, you know, having the heat would be a nice option as well, but yeah. it's going to be uh, real, real warm, or real, real cold in here. You're not going to over-cycle this one. I'm, it, yeah. it may turn on and off a bunch, but it, yeah. it, uh, it's never going to be uh, starving to cool it down. And so. the lights, are those just uh, like a, an LED of sorts? Yeah, so these are an LED puck light. They uh, go up inside. Um, they just kind of uh, click into the, the quarter-inch top. Uh, okay. They're cool white. And then we've got the accent lighting um, here for reading. These are kind of neat. Uh, this is new for 2019. They come on blue for just accent lighting if you're okay. watching a movie. And then you can click them on to actually read. Okay. Um, they and also got the moon gazer up moon here. The moon gazer window yep. so you can see upwards. That's really cool. And that's, I think it, 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 it doesn't feel very claustrophobic. With all the doors and yeah. windows, that's a good feel in here where it just seems like it would be cozy and comfortable. Yeah, really and, airy. And if you, know, if you had to spend a day in here because it's raining or whatever... Yeah. I don't think you'd be real, real upset about that. Yeah. What is, so the trough, what is that? What is that? What's the post there in the middle? Oh, this here? Yep. Yeah. So uh, they wanted the uh, storage, but they also wanted a table. So okay. our mattresses fold up into a couch. Right. Um, and then you could put a table in here, which is like a card table. You could uh, eat your you know, yeah. lunch in here. Um, it's not real big, but it's just enough to kind of make it. Just enough to yeah, keep the give you a flat surface. Yeah. Okay. This is really slick. This is a really nice look, and I think, I mean, I'm sure the video portrays it, but it just isn't, it's factory made. I mean, this is not a, I mean, it's, you're, you're, we're doing, you're making this here in your shop, but it looks like it's made at a large scale factory. So I mean, yeah, it's really yeah. impressive looking. Really so. take the time to, to do a good, good quality job. If it's not right, uh, I'm going to be the first one to pull it off there because I kind of treat these like everyone I own. So okay. uh, I'm going to make sure they're they're a really good product. All right. Let me, let's see what else we can find here. All right. Uh, I think we're going to finish up the tour. This has been a fantastic thing. you got a real, some really cool stuff here. And it's, um, it's amazing to see what's being made you know, 20 miles from my house in a really high quality way, in an innovative way. I guess that would be the best way to say it. I mean, I, the, talking about the walls and that kind of thing, it's just really impressive to see kind of the the innovation in it and what it can do for it's a it's a simple thing but it's making it just so much better so yeah uh, thank you very much for noticing yeah we spent a lot of time i mean just the the first year really of when we got in business 2017 january was redesigning the entire trailer so um i mean i spent probably three months total on just design work of the frame itself Okay. Uh, and so, and you're doing all this is going to be like a CAD drawing thing? Next yeah. Week? So, uh, I used to just do it in AutoCAD. Um, now I've got some cooler tools. I've got uh, SolidWorks. So, I have a full 3D model of this trailer. Uh, okay. And um, if, you know, if, if a customer comes in, they want a, a little bit different cabinet option, I model that so that way I have it in the future. Whether they come back and I need to kind of get a refresher on, okay, where did the wiring go so I don't yeah. ruin it or, or uh, where was a certain feature that I needed to address, um, I've got all that. Uh, in a database. Plus, it's easier to recreate at that point. Well, and it's if, if one person wants it, someone else may want it. And exactly. We can offer that to them, and I can pull them into the computer and just pull them up right there in a 3D virtual, you know, world. Okay. So, I mean, if you're looking at it right now, you said you still have a full-time job. This is a, 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 a part-time thing. I guess it's hard to say that with the scope of this. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, it's a three-month lead time, so that comes out to four a year. I mean, what's the what's the long-term goal of this, or what's... Yeah, I mean, I mean honestly, I'd like it to be my, my full-time gig. Um, I mean, I'd like, in, in the near future, I could see us doing 12 a year, uh, one, one a month. I'd like to get to that point uh, to start out with. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, right now, I really want to push the, the DIY stuff. I, there, okay. I, I went to a, a, a kind of a get-together for Teardrop. It was the Tear Jerkers. Okay, yeah. Um, which you can follow them. They're a Teardrop group. Uh, they can, uh, they're, they've got their website. I don't know if they've got an Instagram or a, I know they've got a Facebook. Okay. Uh, so just look up Tear Jerkers. they got a lot of different uh, chapters of it. But there's an Illinois chapter. There's like 25 Teardrops there. Mm -hmm. And I'd say all but five of them were home-built. Okay. Yeah. So then I started thinking, okay, I get asked all the time, can we buy the walls? Can we, you know, buy components off you? Absolutely. So right now I'm, I'm, I offer the wall kits. We just started the store on our website at uh, just turtleuptrailers.com. Um, so you can go on there and check out the walls. You can order steel or aluminum for both the squirt four by eight and for the um, uh, beacon six by 10. Um, we also can weld them up here. If that's, if that's something you guys uh, are having trouble with, we can weld the walls. You can take them home and then either bolt them down to your frame or, or bring your frame to us. We'll even weld them here. That's not, that's not, a, not an issue to us. Um, that way, you know they're good and straight and square. Okay. Um, 
and then you can finish them out the rest of the way you want to do at home. All right, perfect. So uh, I guess future tents, we've got um, multiple, multiple different uh, options and upgrades we want to start offering. Uh, I'm not going to spill the beans on those yet because we got to see if we can do them yet oh, or not. Understand. But uh, um, my mom did have uh, breast cancer, survived breast cancer last year, so I want to do a breast cancer awareness teardrop in the squirt model. Okay. And do it vintage powder pink and, and yeah. uh, so I'd really like to do that as a raffle. So the, the idea for that is to sell tickets all year long mm -hmm. and then auction it off in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay. Um, it won't be this year, but uh, possibly next year on that one. Oh, I think that's a great idea. And that's um, something that I think it's like one in seven people or one in eight women will face, some, will face breast yeah, cancer in their yeah, lives. So that's a lot. bringing a lot. a lot of awareness to that in a really innovative way. And I think... Um, yeah, so then the proceeds of that would go straight to breast cancer. Um, uh, research and, and uh, development on drugs and, and different uh, you know different treatments for that all right very good uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you if someone's interested yeah um, I offer up my cell phone I always answer my cell phone that is my business phone because when my customers call I want them to talk to me not somebody else all right so uh, on Instagram you're... Instagram is uh, at turtle up trailers uh, Facebook you just look up turtle up trailers and um, on the website turtleuptrailers.com there's a contact link. You can email me straight through there. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, really cool stuff. And we'll be sure to follow along and see what the progress brings. All right. Thank you very much for coming out. All right.